Your payment reason code is the why of the payment from the patient or insurance carrier to add to the patient's state of service when you're posting payments. And you can take a look at the default codes or create your own found under the Master Files menu, down to Transaction Codes, and over and up to Payment Reason Codes. First thing you're going to notice here is the default ANSI Standard Claim Adjustment Codes that have been pre-populated into your new office key. And there are two reasons why you want to use these instead of creating your own. The first of which is if you create your own when you're posting payments and you use your custom code, you're going to get a warning. That's just about it. The second, probably more important reason is, is that these are the only codes that will actually go out on your secondary electronic claims. Now if you want to, you can still go ahead and create your own code, of course. Up at the top I can type in OCP for copay, hit my tab key and spell it out here. And then down below I got three options to choose from regarding my denial tracking in case if an insurance carrier is denying payment on the claim. First of all, you can always exclude this whenever you post a payment with this code here, copay, from the denial tracking. In other words, when a patient pays a copay of $10, it's not going to end up to collect on from the insurance carrier. So for the copay, I would say always exclude. Or you can choose for other payment reason codes to exclude a zero dollar balance. In other words, anything greater, like a penny or more, you want to pull into the denial tracking so you can still collect on it. So you may still want to collect on that one penny or two pennies or whatever from the insurance carrier and have it pulled in denial tracking. Or let's say that the biller writes off the whole account and says, I don't want to mess with it. You do it, the collector, and writes it off as a zero dollar balance. So you want to choose this one so it still pulls in the denial tracking for the collector to still work the account and see what they can get. And of course if you don't remember these you can always hover over them and it'll give you a little pop-up note. And then of course when I'm done I'll be sure to save my work. To go into this a little bit more in detail, when you get your EOB back from the insurance carrier you look on it, uh, post the payment of course, but also tie a code that that is displayed on the EOB. Just look in, see if it's a CR102 or whatever the code is and then post that. And you'll have three types of groups of codes in here, the ANSIs, the first of which will be the PR code. And you can see as I scroll through here, I got three types, my CEO for contractual obligations, my PR codes, which will be for patient responsibility, and then also my CRs for any correction and reversals. You want to click on these and just make sure that they're tied to the correct denial tracking. In other words, do you want it to always exclude if you tie this code to a payment, even if it's a zero dollar payment, or do you want it to exclude the zero dollar balance? Just by default, go through here and select the codes and make sure that you're okay with the defaults. One more quick note that you want to know about is that your payment reason codes will appear on your statements, your secondary e-claims, that's electronic claims, collections and denial tracking modules, your ERA and payment reason reports. But out of multiple payment reason codes that you post, only the first code will appear on your statements, in the denial tracking, and your reports. But for everything else, you'll see all multiple codes. But just keep that in mind, we'll cover that in the posting payment training video.